So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our seventh Lord in the Eleventh House episode. So, today we are doing seventh Lord in the Eleventh House, as in what happens when the planet that controls your seventh house is sitting in the eleventh house. And as usual, if you do not know where your seventh Lord is placed and uh, where your other Lord through houses are placed and all your horoscope details, for that, check out the links here and check out my full astrological report, including my books, Astrology, Conjunction, and Aspects at the Speed of Light. So, let's get started. So, what is 7th house? 7th house is the house of partnership, house of marriage, house of other people. It's how you interact with other people, what type of people you attract in your life. But mainly, it shows your spouse because that's the most common theme. You know, you may be working in service, not doing business as a business partnership, but you definitely are in a marriage partnership, okay? Then what is 11th house? So 11th house represents your hopes, wishes, goals, dreams. It is the house of networks, circle, friends, liquid gains of money. So an 11th house is actually one of the most important house regarding wealth because it shows the incoming of gains, how your gains are coming, where your gains are coming from, okay? So when this uh, seventh Lord goes into the 11th house, what you guys got to remember is that there's a weird um, connection with seven, uh, seven and 11. Because seventh and 11th house are both known as Kama houses. Because Kama houses are houses that fulfill your desires in this world. Those are your third house, which is your artistic talents of and your you know ability to creatively express yourself and everybody's wish is out there to be the next movie star seventh house is a house of desires and wishes because your desires to find that perfect partner in life and then 11th house is a house of your actual real hopes and wishes in terms of money and gain literally 100 percent of you probably who are watching this are going to be like i want money right now i want gains so it's your hopes and wishes so Third, seven, and eleven are house of hopes and wishes. So the Lord of hopes and wishes is going into the fulfillment of desire. Next is that eleventh house is also the Upachya house. It is the most powerful Upachya house. It is a house that grows faster than any other house in terms of giving positive results. Okay. So when 7th Lord is going to the 11th house, what this shows is that your fulfillment of desires regarding money, regarding gains. So when 7th Lord goes into the 11th house, what this shows is that your wishes, your hopes, your, your dreams to have a, you know, um, perfect partner will actually come true. Your partner, you know, your, um, whoever your husband is, whoever your wife is, will help you fulfill your hopes and wishes. They will be there as your um, friendly counterpart to go into the adventures of, you know, making all the hopes and wishes come true. Because remember, 11th house is a house of friends and network circle. It's a house of socializing. And so 7th Lord and 11th house shows that the kind of um, spouse that you desire is in a way needs to be like your partner in crime. Meaning that whatever you do socially, they should be involved in that. And they should enhance your social image into the world. Like the 10th house, 11th house becomes gain of the 10th house. Gain of authority, gain of reputation. And social reputation is pretty much your reputation out in the world. So you actually get that desire filled with the person you marry who will go out there and be very social, mingle with everybody and kind of strengthen your image into society. And what this shows is that you get tremendous gains from marriage. Whenever you go into a marriage or a legal partnership, you get a lot of gains. Now, depending upon what planet is controlling the seventh house is going into the eleventh house, shows that what type of gains you will get, when you will get, how you will get. But mainly what you have to remember is that these are two comma houses that are being activated through each other. Especially the seventh house is being activated. Because seventh house is going into fulfillment of desires. So all your seventh house wishes 
are coming through to the 11th house. What this also tells me is that you were introduced to your um, uh, spouse through a network circle, meaning you were in a party and then suddenly you ran into your love of your life or somebody introduced their friends as your future husband or wife. And so anytime you get into a relationship, they must have that, you know, that best friend feel to it that, oh my God, I can do anything with you. Okay. So let's get uh, on with how different planet, you know, differentiate these things. So let's say if uh, sun controls your seventh house, sun goes into the eleventh house. What this shows is that your spouse will be a very authoritative figure in terms of helping you make your connections, helping you bring your social uh, image up into the world. They'll be connected to a lot of authoritative figures. They'll be connected to people in government. They'll be connected to people in executive positions. And they'll be connected to highly spiritual people as, as, as well. Why? Because Sun and the sign of Sagittarius are two sattvic signs and planets. And when they combine with each other, shows with age, your husband, your spouse will bring a lot of spiritual connections in your life. I don't think you can see my face right now. I might have to move because uh, Mr. Sun is about to set right there. Boom. I'm burning. I guess I should continue on with my video instead of doing the shenanigans, right? All right. I know. Let's change it. All right. So how is this? It's in the corner. So let's say if moon controls your seventh house, moon goes under the 11th house. What this shows is that your spouse will be very determined to making sure that you get gains from other people. They have this um, real psychological effect and control over you. They know what your, you know, um, tolerate points are. They know your like acupuncture points are. They're able to kind of like psychologically manipulate the network circle to bring gains into the marriage. This could be legally, illegally, depending upon what they're doing, you know, because here, if Mercury, if moon is in the first, you know, four or five degrees, it definitely shows that spouse, spouse will psychologically will try to gain over your network circle, will try to gain control of your gains and money. But if, you know, moon has passed that maximum debilitation point between six degrees all the way to like 28, 29 degrees, then we're looking at a different scenario, okay? Then we're looking at a person who might be in, uh, involved with a lot of um, uh, legal things. They might have a network circle of, you know, police officers, detectives, surgeons, or, you know, government secret agents. They might be involved in, you know, a lot of medical groups and medical organizations, organizations that deal with people's emergencies, society's emergencies. That could be a firefighter, policeman, okay? But at the same time, you can attract a spouse who is uh, uh, intelligently very cunning, very smart, may be able to manipulate you and try to get gains out of it. Or somebody who might work in your favor and psychologically, you know, uh, control other people to make sure that the gains are coming in. So this is like a tit for tat situation where you have to see the degree of moon, the degree of, uh, not degree of moon, placement of Mars and Ketu. Because remember that this is like the cux of uh, astrology, the sign of Scorpio. Let's say if Mercury controls your 7th house, goes into the 11th house, shows that you are going to get a social butterfly type of a spouse. Somebody who loves connecting with other people, somebody who loves interacting with other people, is very diplomatic with other people, is kind of like a business person who knows how to softly talk their way into making deals and connections. Kind of like Kevin Spacey from House of Cards. This is one series that I'm addicted to. It came out and I finished the entire series in one day. Like anytime my wife came in my office, I was watching House of Cards. If you haven't watched House of Cards, watch it from season one. It is the most awesome series. And it goes at the pace you want it to go to. It doesn't slow down. It doesn't go too fast. Perfect pace, perfect predictions that you can see out of this. And you kind of root for the bad guy, Kevin Spacey. It's just amazing. Th that's kind of a spouse that you will get with Moon or Mercury. Somebody who's very smart, very slick, you know, somebody who'll be like your friend, who will go out, have party, have a good time. We'll, we'll be very balanced in, socially, you know. 
So that's a very good position for Mercury. Um, let's say Venus controls your um, seventh house. Venus goes into the eleventh house, shows that you're going to attract a, um, a spouse who will definitely bring a lot of money in your life, who will enhance your beauty, and also shows that you'll have a lot of interaction with female network circles. Perhaps you will have a spouse, man, man or woman, who will attract a lot of females into your network circle. Perhaps you have a hot looking, good looking uh, spouse like my wife does, and then you know you attract a lot of females into the uh, network circle. So that's a good thing or a problem, depending upon you know how good looking or bad looking your spouse is. Um, definitely shows that your uh, creative network circle will be enhanced with the spouse. You'll be encircled with a lot of people who might be into entertainment industry, artists, photography, you know, anything from decoration. And at the same time, they'll, your spouse and your network circle will be very um, financially uh, very solid, you know, in this uh, uh, game of money and gains. But definitely shows a beautiful romantic relationship and a very stable relationship. Uh, and there's just a lot of, you know, entertainment, fine foods and dining happening with your spouse. Let's say if Mars controls the um, seventh house, goes in the 11th house, shows that there is this great ambition and aggression towards making sure that the network circle is under control and in your grasp. You want a spouse who's able to maintain and aggressively control you know how the gains come in who the gain comes through and shows that you will be interacting with a lot of macho masculine energy type friends and uh, colleagues and you know network circle why because even as a female even if you attract a woman she will bring in a network circle with a lot of masculine energy your wife will have a lot of masculine energy in her she'll be able to you know because remember this is the upacha house Malefics in Upacha house do very well. Mars in the 11th house will show quick returns to money and investments. Because Mars is a soldier, he likes to move and do things. So the energy of money really flows quickly. Like Mercury. Mercury is a fast moving planet. So money comes and goes, comes and goes. But Mars too, money comes. The energy of money kind of, kind of like quickens. Okay, um, Shows that you, through your spouse, you'll be able, able to gain a lot of real estate in this life. You will be able to gain a lot of government-owned real estate as well in this life. But definitely, uh, for, as far as marriage is concerned, very good marriage. You will have a spouse who will be able to take control and take charge in, in marriage and make sure that the marriage stays put. Let's say if uh, Jupiter controls your uh, seven, uh, seventh house. And Jupiter goes into the 11th house, shows that your spouse is very good at finance, very good at money. They are very good at motivating a large crowd in terms of, you know, how to make money, how to gain money. They're financially very savvy. They are, they're either bankers, financial analysts. They might be, even be sports coaches. Uh, but they're the kind of person who walks into a party and kind of like becomes that slick, you know, advisor in, in, a, in a network setting. They're like the advisor who just knows how to make sure what to do, when to do, how to do. And especially when it comes to money, your spouse is very intelligent, very much knows competitiveness of how to gain the money. But at the same time, we should not forget the significance of Jupiter, which is to enlighten us, which is to broaden our horizon regarding intelligence, spirituality, you know, our um, internal spiritual self. So it shows that your spouse will be bringing in a lot of uh, heads of, you know, spiritual and religious organization in your life. And through that, your philosophical views, it will enhance, your religious view will enhance, your, your spiritual views will, will enhance. And let's say if Saturn controls your 7th house, goes in the 11th house, shows tremendous amount of gains through the spouse. Liquid gain gains through the spouse because Saturn does excellent in the 11th house, you know, especially if it's in an earth or air sign. And although you may marry a spouse who might be either older than you in age or more mature than you, but at the same time, spouse will bring in a lot of stability into the marriage. The gain and fulfillment of desire will be of stability more than anything because these are the people who require stability into their life whenever Saturn rules the seventh house. 
they want a spouse who can kind of secure their marriage, finance, family. And that's what the spouse does. And, the, and as the time grows, so does the wealth, so does the stability, so does the matureness in, in marriage. So very good uh, placement. Now, anytime uh, Malefic rules the seventh house and sits in any Upacha house, Remember, it's always better to marry a little late than early because Malefic really grow better with time, especially in late 20s. So it's better if you were to marry between the age of 28 and 35, whenever Mars, Sun or, you know, Saturn control your seventh house. All right. So, guys, this was uh, my analysis of seventh Lord in the 11th house. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And again, if you want to know where your seventh Lord is placed and where your other planetary placements are, for that, check out the links here and check out my books, Astrology, Conjunction, and Aspects of the Speed of Light, including my numerology report. We'll see you tomorrow with our last episode of Seventh Lord series. Bye-bye.